Okay, so we're just having a listen to our mate Brian. This is the AOR 8600 again. And as you can see, we've adjusted the um, oscillator. It's just sitting in there next to the uh, crystal filter, right down in there. It was about 400 hertz off through uh, being transported. And we can test that. We can have a look over here on our unit and say, right. And look at that. Now, this is a crude way of doing it. Normally, we set up... Um, the oscillator uh, by frequency we would basically um, oh sorry um, we would basically put it to, uh, find the test point in here and that oscillator would then sort of be sitting on a certain frequency and what this does is um, it gives us an ability and I'm going to just show you look at this And look at that. And um, that's um, just just for everybody's, uh, if you've got an AOR, AOR uh, 8600. So you've got your filter there, a couple of crystals there, one crystal there, and bang in the middle there is the adjustment. And uh, that will get you um, cooking with gas. I don't know, light's good enough there. I'll just put a little light on that too. Yeah, so crystal filter, um, you've got those uh, one crystal that's um, vertical, two horizontal crystals, and the adjustment in the middle there. And then look at that. It's uh, all back and running on frequency like it should. So we should be able to find people who are dead on zeros without having to go to you know a different step. Now, obviously, some people don't operate on the on the zeros exactly. Um, oh, let's put it back to him. Um, and um, if if that's the case, function two, and you change the step ratio maybe to point one, hit enter. And then you can really go side to side of the frequency. Lot so, a lot slower scanning rate, of course. Um, oh, uh, sorry, uh, manual tuning rate. But um, it certainly you can now. Once Brian comes back, we can just hear the other chap. Um, but once Brian comes back, we'll, um, we'll just make sure that we're 100% on frequency. And um, uh, this, um, this unit here... Um, it was kind of interesting. Uh, the, they, they actually run uh, different oscillators in this unit uh, for VHF, UHF, uh, and HF. HF is quite an independent area. And what you're looking at here is dynamically the, the, uh, a lot of the HF um, filtering, etc., which is, is done well. They've got a superb receiver. You know, on the previous video, we sort of talked about that. But I kind of thought, well, if someone's got one of these, you know, you need to know if it's come in transit and it's, you know, a bit off, um, then. Uh, you can uh, easily adjust it back up. Um, I will be looking through the um, software, sorry, the, um, um, well, it will be the software manual, but um, the uh, service manual of this, and just checking a few other sort of details, um, because this one did take a pretty big knock, but um, uh, I'll do that out in the workshop. I'll actually print that, that out. And, and look, we may go back and set this um, this 7115 by the oscillator and, and just triple check, you know, sort of that's correct once we've got the service manual in front of us. Um, and, and that's often a great way to go. The reason for that is that even though I can sort of see from the little bit I saw of the service manual that um, there are, you know, different master oscillators in the AOR, AR8600, um, sometimes one oscillator can obviously affect another, so you can get a great result on HF, suddenly find out that you're, you know, 400 hertz off on, um, on an FM signal up on... Um, you know, 146 megs or something, or 144.1 or something um, for sideband even, um, and, and that would be probably my next test, just actually thinking out loud, is we'll run this up on 144.1, uh, we'll chuck the uh, IC9700 uh, signal into it, and um, and basically have a bit of a look and see, um, you yeah, know, that that's um, 144.1 lower sideband is, is where it needs to be. Um, but uh, anyway, once again, this is sort of part two, um, but I did want to sort of show you... Um, you know, with a few screws out and bits and pieces. They have a lot of shielding on these things. Um, this is for an option. I've got to look up what the option is, but obviously fits in, plugs in. Uh, so I'll have a look at that. And uh, knowing me, I'll have to chase it up because that's me. Um, this is just a level of shielding they do. I mean, there's millions of screws, you know, that are put into this. And um, uh, it's uh, it really is a very robust unit. But um, uh, anyway. All right, well, look, um, that's just a quick look at um, calibrating the uh, AOR 
uh, AR8600. And um, uh, look, I, I will do a follow-up video on the setting the oscillators because there will be some of you that, you know, a little bit like me, um, want to see how to set it up. Um, I've, I've done this very rough because I'm sitting in my radio shack, not in my workshop. Um, and uh, and you can do that. Absolutely, you can do that um, on this particular one because there's a there's a way to do it. But you know, let's um, let's generally go back and set the oscillators by the uh, by the manual. <laughs> anyway, all the best. Um, just a quick follow up on the um, little fella. Uh, seems to be uh, working a lot better now. So Brian's not coming back to us. I, th I thought he might just give us one last over. This is a VK5 NBQ over in. Um, in South Australia, uh, I was sort of thought if I can get one more over from him, I'll just hang in there for a tick. Uh, I can hear the other station who's right down in the mud. Unfortunately, just not in our um, area. Uh, we're sort of pointing over towards Brian at the moment, uh, over to South Australia, so uh, on the 40 metre beam. So uh, when he finally comes back, um, we'll just let him sort of give it a bit of an over. Um, notably, everything that you need to change on a um, a basis of uh, setup menus are all on these keys here. It's all function one, two, three, four, five, two, three to zero. Um, pretty easy to get around. I found the book was um, the prints in the book. I need new glasses. Seriously, um, it's so small. Uh, it was a pain. Um, but you can pretty much go function one, function two, function three, and go through each one, and you'll just go, ah, right, that's what they're doing, and it's it's not hard at all. So pretty intuitive, but. Um, uh, What's a standby do? Nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm not in that mode anyway. I'll have to look that one up. Um, but um, uh, some of the other features, obviously. Oh, here you go. This is what we've been waiting. We've been wasting time. Now, here's Brian signal on the RSSI uh, meter. Now, he's pretty strong because when I compared this on the... Um, this is this is like a, a no preamp signal on the RSSI meter. This is bare basic. So um, when you see an RSSI meter like this, it's it's telling you, you know, it's like what, pretty much what the real signal is. A lot of us are using preamps these days and bits and pieces, but uh, yeah, he's strong. He's very strong. Um, we had on the previous uh, uh, review we did, we had the um, signal solid across with uh, Mao. So we can sort of work out from that and, and from the RSSI meter. Uh, the Riverland's not co uh, coming in a lot better at the moment uh, by probably 10 dB more than what Adelaide is. And, and look, I know Brian's signal. He's normally 20 over 9. And geez, his signal is pretty good anyway. Um, let's just have a quick look at him on... Um, oops, over here. Change. Yeah, well, so that meter's not too far out because we've got a bit of preamp in there. So let's take that preamp out. And look at that. RSSI meter says 5.8 to 5.9, 78.50 says, you know, 5.8 to 5.9, probably more 5.9. Isn't that interesting? So, and, you know, obviously a lot of us run a bit of preamp, but, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to reach over here. And here we go. Probably, probably the icon meter is a little bit more generous. This is probably averaging more 5.8 as a peak. Um, oh, no, it gets up there a little bit. Every now and again. But, yeah, I would, I would say that... Um, the um, uh, 7850 could be a little bit more generous because generally these little RSSI meters are pretty good. But um, ah, look, he, he's a strong signal. That's me, old mate in Lobethal, VK5 MBQ. Great guy. So I'll finish with that because, um, you know, you can only listen to him for so long. But uh, he's a bit of fun, that's for sure. 73 is from VK3 Charlie Mike. This has just been a quick look at how to twiddle things in your AOR8600. Uh, uh, Cheers all.